Joining us now, Hoover Institution Senior Fellow, Victor Davis Hansen. Victor, great to see you. He can't answer that question for Michael Strahan because he does believe in getting rid of the Electoral College because he is a radical left-wing liberal. And you wrote about this very issue in 2020, that they believe in trampling on what the Founding Fathers built and trampling on our Constitution and trampling on an Electoral College that ensures that, and these are your words, that rural voters and small states have importance in national elections. We know that he's lying, Gagan, because he signed into legislation in Minnesota uh, the National Voter, Popular Voter Compact. And that was a way the Democrats and the left, funded by millions of dollars in legal help, are trying to circumvent the Constitution by repealing the Electoral College without having two-thirds of the Congress or three-fourths of the states amend it. They're just simply saying, my state will follow the national vote contrary to the Constitution and not reflect my own state's popular vote. And there are only 61 votes short of getting 270 uh, majority votes in the next election if they get another three or four states. So he's, been, he's, he's on record for that, repealing the Electoral College, but by unconstitutional means. And uh, all of the Democrats are. They don't believe in the Electoral College. Now they don't. But remember, not very long ago, they were bragging that they had California, Illinois, and New York before the voting even began, 104 electoral votes, and then they had the fabled they, they invented the term blue wall, the 46 votes in Pennsylvania, Michigan, and Wisconsin that were a deadlock, they thought. And when Trump blew that up in 2016, all of a sudden the Electoral College was an anathema to them. You know, Victor, um, our, our founders obviously were, were brilliant uh, because if you don't have the Electoral College, you'll have candidates just go to the biggest, uh, the biggest uh, states with the biggest populations and campaign there. But the way the Electoral College works is people come to my home state of Wisconsin. They come to rural places like Wausau, Wisconsin, or Eau Claire, Wisconsin, um, because every vote in that state truly does matter. And you're giving equal voice to people who live in rural America, to big cities, in different viewpoints, uh, different regions. And, and again, if you get rid of this, you, you kind of lose what makes elections so great in America. Well, Sean, you're just echoing exactly what the founders said in the Federalist Papers. They said that without an electoral college, the people in the big cities and that particular point of view would represent all of us. And more importantly, they said, when you disperse the voting through the states to various states, it's very hard to rig a national election because it's easier to do it with one popular vote rather than 50 electoral mm. college votes. And that was very important to them. And also, they pointed out that we're the United States, not the United People of America. And we represent 50 different entities that have a say under our Federalist Project. And so that was the idea, to get all of these states to join the Constitution and the United States by giving them singular powers. And, and you know, if they, want to, if they want to get rid of it, they have to go through the amendment process. But they know they will lose. So like, just like they want to pack the court or bring in two states, Puerto Rico and the D.C., or they want to get rid of the Senate filibuster. They always do the short-term expedient uh, way for, to, to gain and to sustain their power. Victor, after two attempts on his life, uh, President Trump and his campaign, and this is according to the Washington Post, um, President Trump's campaign has requested military aircraft for President Trump to fly in during the final weeks of the campaign uh, ballistic glass pre-positioned in seven battleground states for the campaign's use, an array of military vehicles. Uh, Victor, um, do we still have you? Uh, y yes. The, it is astonishing to me that this was leaked to the Washington Post. If the United Secret, the U.S. Secret Service and anyone in power cares about protecting this man's life, why is this wound, wind up in the paper? I don't know. I don't have the answer to that. You remember Benny Johnson? He introduced legislation this spring to strip Donald Trump of all Secret Service protection that was accorded to ex-presidents before even announced he was a candidate. So they, they've had an obsession with Donald Trump for, for, in a variety of ways with this assassination porn, you know, that he's Hitler, 
that we've got to put a bullseye on him, we're going to beat him up, we're going to decapitate him. All of that language over the last decade has really lowered the bar. And with the fluidity or the porous nature of the Secret Service, you've got the worst of both worlds. You've got this impression, and, and the Rasmussen poll, uh, Rasmussen's poll just showed that 25% of registered Democrats wouldn't mind Donald Trump being shot. So when you, when you have that climate and you have a poor secret service, that encourages any would-be nut to say, you know what, I can do better than the two earlier amateurs. And if I did do better, a lot of people in the United States would congratulate me. So you'd think the secret service would err on the side of security so they wouldn't they wouldn't endanger them a third time, but I'm afraid that's not the case. You know, that 25% is a uh, viewpoint is shared by many of the elites in this country and many in the deep state, in the government, um, which is why they probably in their hearts don't want to give him, Donald Trump, this extra protection. Uh, but I do hope they, again, it's military uh, ground and air transportation, no fly zones over his residence and his rallies. Uh, he deserves this kind of protection. Uh, especially after two uh, attempts on his life. Victor Davis Hanson, always wonderful to see you. Thanks for being with us on The Bottom Great Line. Great to see you.